the future revolution, in order to happen, has to already be there. There is no way a revolution can happen in a vacuum. Just, you know, even you could never have invented the microprocessor with, without a whole history of semiconductors, transistors, used for what? To make portable radios, to make portable the same electrical appliances that you were making before bigger. You make them smaller and you make them portable with transistors. But then you learn about transistors. And then you continue with semiconductors and then you manage to do integrated circuits. And then after integrated circuits, you go all the way to the microprocessor, which is a computer on a chip, which is already. But for that, you have to have a computer. So you had the big IBM computers, which were also originally with valves. Later, they were with transistors. And then they end up being, you know, they, you understand what a computer is because you have all that happened in the middle of deployment of mass production. And when Watson says four or five of these are going to be enough to solve the world's problems because there are only four or five governments or companies that can use them, he was in the midst of mass production making an innovation which made sense in mass production. And he never imagined that you would have a laptop, a laptop at the end of his innovation. So you cannot predict what's going to happen, but you do know that all the elements are there for whatever is going to happen. The thing is, how do they come together and what's the breakthrough that makes them come together? And that's the thing that's very difficult to predict. Of course, it must be easier now than it was any other time before because now we understand technology much more. There's so much more knowledge about how technology evolves now that the possibility of predicting becomes great.